We're going to get things started with Venus and the invocation, right? I just flew in from Vegas. Boy, are my arms tired. On a more serious note, please uh, join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for placing us here in this moment. We thank you for football, not only for the opportunity to play, nor the recognition we have received over our careers, but because this sport has brought us together as a family. This sport has forged everlasting relationships for us young men. It has given us mentors and leaders, a place to flourish. We thank you for our mothers and fathers, our sisters and brothers, our teammates, our coaches and trainers. We are truly blessed to have such opportunities and support at Upper St. Clair High School. <clears throat> we thank you for our season, our careers, and our time well spent playing football here at Upper St. Clair. Lord, please pray for our futures. Pray for our families and our friends. Pray that these relationships last forever. Lord, we thank you for this meal that, that has brought us together tonight. Please bless our food that it may nourish our souls and give us strength and health. God bless Upper St. Clair football. Amen. Amen. I'm honored to serve as the president of the Football Boosters this year, and I want to recognize some of those folks that have really put a lot of time into the Boosters this year as well. Chris Coughlin, our vice president. Mary Jo McGuire, our secretary, has kept us very organized. Lisa Park, our corresponding secretary. And Kathy Hess, who does an amazing job for us as our treasurer. As far as our role, we really our role is to help support the team and the players and the coaches and the athletic administration as well. Um, we've had a lot of parents and families really step up this year and had, in terms of our fundraising activity wanted to recognize some of the chair people that were part of our organization this year. Uh, we kicked off the year with Community Day and Bob and Lori Tuttle um, did a great job with that, so thank you. And then we moved on to our dinner dance, which we actually changed the time of year. We have that in the spring, which is a great opportunity if you're new to the high school and your kids are young to go and meet other parents. And um, some of the coaches, they, most of the coaches actually attend some of the administration. So Mary Jo McGuire did a great job with regard to our dinner dance this year. And then we kick it into high gear and we do our really big fundraising activities in like June, July, and August to get ready for the season. And this year was an exceptional year. We had two record-breaking fundraising activities. Uh, the first was with the golf outing. Um, Jeff and Paula Kahn did an amazing job with the golf outing this year. And then we had our coupon card sales that um, Greg and Karen Austin led for us. And that actually, um, wanted to point out, ended up being um, a tremendous opportunity. We, that's an annual fundraiser for us. This year, the administration, we had the pay-to-play fee. And we're really proud to say that 105 of our boys raised their own money for their athletic fees this year for their $100. And that was through the um, coupon card sale, and we also set a record at the same time for the boosters with that uh, fundraiser, so thank you. We've been very fortunate to have Lisa Park do our football program. Uh, so she again uh, led that for us this year. We had really just amazing, high-quality football programs at our games, so thank you, Lisa. And then Heather Slinger was our program sales coordinator and handled our senior recognition this year. Um, Rose Radzikanis has been on our membership commit drive and does a great job of reaching out to all the new families. Uh, so thank you, Rose, for your service. She's been a long-standing member of the Booster family, and um, Rose and I share something in common. This will be our last year, so we're very sad about it. But I know she's been involved with Upper St. Clair with her three boys for a very long time. Um, we also had uh, merchandise. Chris and Christy Lee uh, did a great job of getting helping us all the upper things in our tire. 
And then we had some of our freshman moms step up and handle our 50-50 raffle, and they did a tremendous job, not just at the varsity games, but also at the JV games. Maureen Keefe and Liz Smith. And I think one of the players and coaches' favorite, and even the mom's favorite um, activities that we have are our pasta dinners. Um, we had amazing food. It was always well organized. Um, I think there was plenty of it for everything to go around. And Lisa Gannon did a tremendous job keeping us fed during the year. And we had Debbie Loper who headed up our parking, so thank you, Debbie. Scott and Lisa Boyd with our after game snacks. And we also have Gail Watinsky who does an amazing job on our website. I hope you've had the opportunity to stay informed on our website. I was actually part of the Boosters maybe four or five years ago when we talked about having a website for two years, and I would have never dreamed that it would become what it is today. And it's a great source of information for everyone, the players, parents, coaches, everybody to stay informed in terms of what's going on with Upper St. Clair football. And lastly, I'd like to thank um, the chairs for our awards banquet tonight, and that was Kathy Schwaba. We did an amazing job bringing everything together. Lisa Park and Mary Jo McGuire. I've enjoyed tremendously. I think I've been part of the Boosters for eight years now. I've enjoyed it tremendously. Um, I want to thank Greg Chaffee for his um, speech tonight. What he said is so true. Said we're a football family, and that's how I feel about Upper St. Clair football, the, the boosters, the players, the coaches, the athletic administration. And there's a pride and tr tradition that as you become involved in the program that you feel so thankful to be a part of. So I want to thank everyone for that and tell you to enjoy the ride. It goes very fast, but I've enjoyed every minute of it and want to thank everybody here for all of their support. I would like to introduce our beloved coach Jim Render to come up and do the awards portion of the day. In the 32 previous years, none of the men that were president introduced me as beloved. <laughs> I might have to elect another woman. <laughs> did you ever wonder? Uh, did you ever wonder where people like Letterman and Jay Leno, uh, Don Imus, they, where they get their material? Don Imus always says, "I can't make this stuff up." You know, he'll he'll say, "Well, where they get most of their material is real life happenings." For instance. Artie Walker's comments in the morning paper. <laughs> you know, the comedians can't make that stuff up. It's, it's just poured out right there. For those of you that haven't read the paper, uh, and I'm not going to dwell on Artie much. <laughs> My brother had been on a more positive thing. So. Anyhow, thank you. What a wonderful banquet. Great turnout. Maybe the biggest uh, we've ever had. Uh, the committees, of all the committees that Mary mentioned, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of them. And uh, Mary, when you and Rose sit here and reflect on the, the past years that you've been in the Boosters Club, just remember, you don't have to leave. <laughs> That's why um, you mentioned Kathy Hess, our treasurer. Kathy's not here, is she? For those of you that don't know, <clears throat> Kathy had a son that played years ago, uh, who's now about to take his uh, dental board exam. So it's been a while, and Kathy still remains our treasurer. So I would give that open invitation to any and all of you that. Uh, you don't have to. You don't have to graduate just because your son graduates. You're certainly welcome to stay. Uh, when I grew up, uh, my high school, the Boosters Club was made up of representatives from the other service clubs in in our town: the Kiwanis Club, and the Lions Club, and, and 
they used to fight to be the representative to the Boosters Club. And it wasn't, not that there's anything wrong with this, but it wasn't run by parents, per se. It was run by people in the town. So since all of you are people in the town, uh, just keep in mind, Mary, <laughs> that you're welcome to stay. <laughs> Some clubs, I'm not talking about ours necessarily, but some clubs exist for the wrong reason. Some clubs want to set policy. Some clubs want to uh, fire the coach. And, uh, <laughs> we haven't had to ask. <laughs> but my real point is, this Boosters Club has been very, very supportive. And a great boosters club, in my mind, says to the coaches, what can we do to help you win? Or what can we do for the players to make them feel special about being a football player? And I think that's what this club and this parent organization has done. We, we've spent a lot of money on some video equipment and uh, various other things that you see here behind me. And in essence, what their boosters have made a statement is, what can we do to help you win? So to all of you, uh, thank you very much for helping us win. <coughs> I'd like to, uh, there's so many things I need to do, but uh, and I know there's people that want to, go home and watch the Dallas Cowboys and I might be one of them, so we'll keep this uh, moving. At this time, I'm going to bring up our freshman coaches to help me honor our freshman players. I'm not looking for their names, but I know them. <laughs> <laughs> Now the freshmen, just to enlighten you once again, we used to give the freshmen these great t-shirts and that's all we gave. And uh, a couple years ago I decided that we would send out a little message to the freshmen along with their little gift. So now we give them a t-shirt, we give them a pair of white socks, <laughs> White is uh, the official color of our uniforms, and sometimes kids get a little mixed up on that, <laughs> and they wear black. So, just to make sure that we're off to a clean start, we are now giving them a pair of white Nike socks, and we're giving them a jump rope. <laughs> I met this guy a few years ago at the American Football Coaches Convention, and um, the, the point is, the rope is white, black, and red, and, it, and the handle is specific to Upper St. Clair football. I think he might even put the, the U on there this year. But for you parents, the idea is to encourage your son to get the rope, to go out in the driveway, or in the garage or the basement, 
and use this rope. Why? Because nobody jumps more rope than we do. If you have quick feet and can handle your own body and move, we can probably teach you how to play football. But the first thing you have to do is be able to handle your own body and weight. And uh, if you've ever watched these boxers that train jump ropes, and you see them on TV sometimes, uh, I guess that's what we're aiming for. So don't let your son tuck the rope away in the house someplace. Make him use it. And uh, you'll be doing all of us a good place. Are you guys ready? Now, I will say this, man. Some ropes are a little longer than the others. So think
I don't want to say I've been here a long time, but I introduced Wharton's dad when he was a football player for me, and Madsen's mom when she was a cheerleader. So. <laughs> All right, one last time for the freshmen. Hey. Are you guys going to sit down or are you going to stand? This is another example of excellence in education. I hope you guys hesitate to leave the weight room. <laughs> I don't you remember Woody Hayes when he was the coach at Ohio State, and he was the coach when I was growing up, but he was a reference, and he was a kind of a hero, mentor. And he, he wrote a book. Woody, he wrote several books, but the, the one I read occasionally uh, is entitled, You Win With People. And maybe he should have said you win with special people. Uh, not that I want to speak for Woody, but uh, the gist of the book is that, and I think our team and our coaching staff reflects this, uh, you win because you have special people. And one point uh, that I was reading recently about assistant coaches, Woody, made the point that they are not they are not really assistant coaches. And I thought the, the point being is an assistant is somebody that comes along behind, let's say, the head coach and assists. But these guys are not assistant coaches, they're coaches. I don't tell them what to do. Well, occasionally, but my point is they teach. They coach, they think, they adjust, they prepare. And what he used to quote a, 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 a Chinese general by the name of Sun Tzu who wrote a book called The Art of War. And in there, he quoted Sun Tzu as saying, all men can see these tactics whereby I conquer. But what they don't see is the strategies out of which victory is the end result. Translate that, you see what we do on Friday nights. You see the things that we are attempting to do to win. But what you don't see is the strategy, the meetings, the preparation, and the teaching that is done by these coaches. If you value anything I say, trust me when I tell you that we have the finest coaching staff, the best people to prepare our young men. Trust me. players that have already had surgery, and I know Dakota is going to have surgery, and <clears throat> the coaches, uh, uh, they, they, they give their all too. So Chuck McKinney is not going to jump up here tonight because he's headed for hip surgery on January the 12th. Is that right, Charles? So. Some of you players, it might be easier for you to go over there and, and say hello to the esteemed veteran coach, Chuck McKinney. So I've introduced Chuck. Wait, Chuck. <laughs> so I'd like to bring up the remainder of the staff to help present these awards, and I know they they really enjoy shaking all the players' hands. Terry Coleman. John Miller. John 
Tom Norton, Damian Petragas, Tim Perryman, Tim Robbins, Dan Stalut, and John Cavallo. The sophomores receive a very nice pair of uh, workout wet pants with their number on them. And at this time, I'd like to let you meet all the sophomores. Alex Bowman. May you sophomores continue to get bigger and faster. Okay, how about one more time for the junior class? to introduce some special people that help make our football team uh, better, just as the Boosters Club, it also takes a support team of all different types of people. <clears throat> Joe Graceppo serves as the head trainer and assistant athletic director, and he was a very busy man this fall as was John Sears, the assistant trainer. Uh, they spent a lot of hours, off hours, in the training room. They came in early for uh, treatments, and stayed late, Saturdays and Sundays. And um, <clears throat> I hope that all of you appreciate Joe and John as much as the players. Would you guys stand up and be The 
there's, there's going to be a third Graceffalo by this time next year. I'd like to introduce a couple of guys that have been with me, helped hire me, and have been the voice in the press box for all the 33 years that I've been here. And I just found out recently, the school board promised that if I would stay another 33 years, along with you guys, they will they will get a sound system so that everybody can hear what Carl Lindstrom and John Guido. Three statisticians that are here, unsung heroes that make sure the press, including uh, the internet people and all these guys, get our current statistics as to what we're doing from a statistical standpoint. Matt Dudley, Justin Gramba, and Kevin Clark. Are you guys here? Our athletic director is here tonight, Matt Mellinger. Just as the Boosters Club has provided funds to make our program better, so has Matt. He has also purchased things. Uh, a very nice computer, as a matter of fact, to help our technology, technology, of which I know very little about. But anyhow, Matt, thank you. And Cindy Storr is Matt's able secretary. Cindy, thank you. Matt Martucci is also an assistant AD and director of football operations. Where's Matt? Uh, that looks like a football player, still wants to coach, and is a support guy for our football program, Dr. Michael Galani. There's another fellow that's here that I'd like to introduce who's not in your program. I've been doing business with Ron Fees since back when I was a young coach at Uniontown. And many of the pictures and uh, <clears throat> things that uh, have made our program special for all these years, and the plaques, Ron's been doing these plaques for I don't know how long. More years than he and I want to count. But Ron, stand up and let him see you. And we photographers are better than it's ever been. And uh, uh, we keep buying them high def cameras, and, 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 but their work ethic is tremendous. After the games, before the games and the actual shooting. Uh, is, Keith, I don't, is Keith fairly here? Keith makes our highlight film. And I know Mike O'Brien is not here, but I know Tom Chaffee's here. And uh, when he and I negotiated about him being our video guy, he said, I most definitely want to stay in the program after my son graduates. My kind of guy. So, Tom Okay. I'm not crying yet, so. This is always the bittersweet moment when we bring the seniors up. And 
And I know some of you have been wondering, is old Jim going to introduce all 28 of them individually? We only had 12 last year. How's he going to do this? Well, I, I have paired them up when we have large classes in the past, and I'll have to tell you right now that I paired them up again. And it's amazing how there are some, so many interlocking things here. At least I thought so. I've had a little fun doing it. So, you can boo whenever you're ready. <laughs> some of these are in the form of an award. You know, like, what award would I give this pair? This pair would get an award for I didn't even know them last year. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know these guys. They weren't a member of the football program. I'm not even sure Marcus lives in this country. I'm not even sure. I only wish I would have met them earlier. And a little side story. Um, when Matt Paxson brought Eric Astorius to, to the weight room one day, my first reaction is I wanted to kill him. <laughs> because I thought, we don't need a senior. The kid's going to be a senior, doesn't know anything about football, never played before, blah, blah, blah. But uh, both these guys, they just kept coming. They kept coming. And I, and I grew to like them both very much. And Eric, you know, he, got, he was where I could see him practice every day. He caught the ball and did all the right things. It's a shame I didn't have these kids for four years, or our staff didn't have them for four years. Uh, Marcus, big Marcus, looked more like a football player than anybody we got. And Eric was very athletic. But this time, Marcus, Bojack, and uh, Eric Pistorius. Come on. These next two guys actually talk eh, once every week or so. They'll, they'll, they'll talk. And uh, again, they're just great kids that I wish we had in the program longer and uh, wish they were coming back. Uh, you know, if you have 28 kids and you have 22 positions, 23 counting the kicker. That means not everybody's going to play. One of the sad facts about this game, I guess. But they got in some games, and, uh, and what a nice pair of young men. I'm talking about Marty Fernier and Alex Lamar. <laughs> Things 
and say, just a minute. There's one more second. <laughs> and then you got a group of people in Heinz Field with millions of dollars of electronic devices and a jumbo scoreboard. And they can't get it right. <laughs> But Ryan Boyd's got it right, he knocked that pass down in overtime, you know what I mean? And poor Matt Paxson had his hand stepped on and grounded with the cleat and, uh, and still finished that game. And these guys, uh, I'll miss them uh, in the locker room too. Ryan Boyd and Matt Paxson. Somebody's got to run the routes, you know, that the other team <clears throat> runs. So these guys would do that. And I'm talking about Chad Truver and Tyler Morrow. Oh. One of Tyler's teachers told me how smart he was, or is, and, uh, you know, she told me some academic facts about him that I didn't know. So, it's always nice to know that some of our players are contributing to this excellence of education. <laughs> I'm going to go through the alphabet in the next some of these. Right now, I'm on G. I'm on G. And uh, in the program, I noticed that Bobby Tuttle was quoted as saying to Alex Garwick, stay the way you are, you're going to make a great jockey. <laughs> that was senior. And then Carl Gibson, his quote was, "Need more cowbell from Aristotle." Not that way. Well, there's, I don't tell you why I never. <laughs> now, let's talk about Alex Starwick and, and Carl Gibson. First of all, I'm glad you guys didn't stay the way you were. I'm glad you got bigger, faster, stronger, and made big plays. Because, and Alex, I'll have to tell you a little secret. When you were a sophomore, I didn't see a bright future for you. <laughs> when you were a sophomore, when you were a junior, I started watching that kid. That kid could really catch the ball. I mean, he made a lot of improvement. And Carlton Gibson is a very athletic person. And uh, as coaches, I think we saw him grow. Saw them both grow. Because Alex made big plays on offense. Blocks that a lot of you probably didn't see. And uh, one of the toughest assignments is to play outside linebacker when you're out there in the open space all by yourself. And of course, 
we wouldn't have been in that uh, fourth quarter scenario if uh, Carlton hadn't intercepted that pass in the fourth quarter down uh, Heinz Field. But the G boys came a long way. Telling Starwood, Carlton. I'm very thankful that you guys didn't stay the way you were. <laughs> you guys got something in common that they might not even realize themselves. This is, I'm in the S's, I'm in the S category. Schwab's mother graduated from Northwestern where I started. And James Sutton's mother graduated from Wittenberg where I finished. <laughs> <laughs> now they both, thankfully, is when the players get better and better. And uh, they were both very conscientious. And I want both of you to make sure that you get over there and shake Coach McKinney's hand. James Southern and Jack Schwab. I got uh, Greg Chaffee and Dakota Conwell on this. And you know, what I'm going to talk about <clears throat> for these two guys, and Dakota was our most valuable player last year, but I'm not going to talk about football. Or I'm not going to talk about uh, plays they made or whatever. But what I am going to talk about is how they both love life. And they both competed against one another at the same position, and they were best friends. And I just think that both of them, in different ways, made tremendous contributions to our football program. I can remember when I went over to St. Louis to watch Greg play in a championship game, and in effect, I was recruiting. One of the best Sunday afternoons that I've ever spent because I got to know this quality young man. And Dakota, of course, I've known Dakota uh, through his older brother. I've known him for a long time. Watched him compete in a lot of different events. And uh, I thought it was marvelous. In the uh, one newspaper, uh, he was quoted as saying that the uh, Central Catholic game was the best game of his life. And here's a young man who did not play in that game, who was so happy and thrilled for his teammates. And uh, that's why I say these guys are being honored because they love life. Greg uh, led us in prayer after every game and then of course tonight. So <clears throat> that'll, that's going to be more important over the long haul than what they actually did on the football field. Greg Chaffee, Dakota Conference. Guys in this room 
that listen to what I have to say. And I'm talking uh, specifically about Kellen Malkern and Zach Tobias. They were, uh, they, they, they became a team unto themselves. They would stretch by themselves, they would kick, they would snap the ball. And then I noticed as the year went on, well, maybe halfway through the practice, they, they would leave and go and change their door. <laughs> and I thought, am I running a fraternity around here? <laughs> Who's in charge? But <laughs> the point is, they were both like boiled ham. They were always ready. <laughs> Did you ever think about bending over and snapping a football between your legs right on the target in front of 5,000? Did you ever try to do that? Yes. And, uh, but anyhow, Zach did it. He enjoyed it. And, you know, he's one of these guys, the more you talk to him, the more you find out what an in-depth person he is. And Killen's a guy that wants to please you. If I were to say to him, if I were to say to him, you need to go out and kick the ball 10,000 more times in October, he would have done it. And uh, our kicking game has been great. Do what the coaches tell them to do. And it's nice that you guys want to please the baseball coaches the way you do. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, you gotta have a little fun here. <laughs> when you see their bodies, you'll know that the baseball coach had more influence on them than I do. But anyhow, it doesn't make any difference. The weight room is only one part. The other part is when you get out there on Friday night lights and you make plays. And you make plays. And these two guys made plays. They, uh, one of them punted the ball and the other one caught it. Not, not at the same time. <laughs> they didn't punt the ball. For, you know, Steve didn't go over and punt the ball for the other team. Mike Jetson. But uh, if you watch what they did, whether it was offense, defense, or the kicking game, they made a lot of plays. And of course, the play that um, that Mike made uh, to dive over that other kid and bring the ball down on the goal line. And by the way, the commissioner of the WPIL wasn't sure that the ball hit the goal line. We're going to send him that picture. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, Steve, you know, if you notice when Steve comes up here, you're in a sling, aren't you, Steve? There's a young man that had the shoulder problem that probably should have been operated on last year, but he decided he wanted to play baseball and he wanted to gut it out on our football team, knowing that it, it was going to hurt. And now he got it correctly. Uh, two marvelous athletes, Mike. Wilcox and Steve Jones. athletic ability from his mother, I know that. <laughs>
And I'm talking about our two linebackers and blockers. I'm talking about Austin Stephan and Bobby Tuttle. I wish they were bigger. They wish they were bigger. The opponents are doggone glad that they're not. Because these guys were tough. I mean, tough. And whether they were tackling or whether they were blocking, they did a great job. And they're not tall, but their hearts big. They kept them shorter. Come on up here, Bobby and Austin. In his quotes in the program, Austin said, having the opportunity to play football on Friday nights, I thought that was marvelous. Coach Cassidy and the Sundance kids. Do you remember the part these two bank robbers, you know, were, were trying to get away, you know, and, and the one group of, of sheriffs kept coming after them. And uh, I think it was Paul Newman, the character he played, and every now and then he'd say, who are these guys? Because they just kept coming, you know? But we had a couple guys who were just like the Butch Sunday. They kept coming. One of them would run the ball and make a big play, then the other one would run the ball and make a big play. Or they'd make uh, a, 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 a kick return. Or they would make a big play on defense. And I'm talking about A.J. McGuire and Zach D. <laughs> I'm pretty sure our opponents probably asked that question many times. Who are these guys? They keep coming. Get that haircut. I know you want to look like me. Well, it's time to talk about some lines. We got the, the political left and the political right. We all depended, you know, all coaches want to run to the right, I guess, because we're all right-handed around. But when you can run both sides equally, that's good. And, you know, we had, we had our line coming back uh, virtually intact. The left side was manned by a couple of guys uh, a little shorter than what we'd like, a little shorter than what they would like. And, uh, but they did their job. For two years, they blocked and locked and blocked, and occasionally they would be called upon to help out defensively. And, uh, but what a great job uh, Andrew Poloshenko and Jared Hess did on the left side.
party group one healthy. And we missed this guy down the stretch. Well, we talked about the uh, little bit of uh, left side, the wild side, and now we go to the conservative right. Conservative, but these two guys on the right side have been, uh, they've been there for three years. You don't, you don't see that very often, where you have sophomores start, in some cases, both offense and defense. But uh, holy cow, uh, what a force they were on their right side. And uh, we're going to miss them. Uh, you younger guys got a lot, uh, a lot of big steps to take in order to fill the shoes of both the left side and the right side. At this time, would you honor our two co-captains, uh, Ian Park and Jake Redford. synopsis of why the award is presented and how it came to be. Uh, but I, I'm glad I did this. Uh, I hope it gives a little more insight as to, uh, uh, to these awards. Uh, some of you in here that I've alluded to as being former students certainly uh, 
would remember Joe Argero and what a great uh, asset to the, to the whole school he was. And uh, I won't read it, but you can read the description of why we give this award, which we, uh, the top line says, thank you for being a great teammate. And this year, we have two winners of the Joseph F. Arturo Memorial Award. And the two winners, thank you for being my teammate, Jake Radzikanis and Greg Chaffee. Some of these awards are voted on by the players and some are voted on by the coaches. And then when we, on the ballot that the players filled out, we said you can make a suggestion for the Archer Row Award. The coaches are going to have the final say on that, but you can make a suggestion. And I think the coaches and the players both did a wonderful job. Uh, the next award, if we go down the list, Mark, I see you standing back here. Did you read the Did you read the John Bruno Award? Okay, Mark gets a little special mention there. Right now, we're on the George Bolger Award, and that goes to our uh, most valuable player. And, you know, I, I don't know how many of you knew George Bulger, but he was everything that I write about here. We've got a lot of great parents over the year, years, but George was a special guy. And he was taken away from us way too early, <clears throat> April 13th, uh, 1993, cancer. Because at that time that we uh, decided to name our most valuable player after George Bulger. And once again, the winner is Dakota Connor. special teams award uh, as voted on by the players. The first player would be Steve Gannon. And the second one is Rory Blair. Chuck Award, and I'm sure most of you 
know that it's named after Chuck McKinney. And uh, I picked this award. I don't uh, consult too much. Sometimes I do with Chuck, but I don't think any of you know who won it this year, do you? Well, as I said in this little description, maybe maybe we should just call it the special award. But <clears throat> we have a tie for the Chuck, one a player, and one a coach. And the player is the guy that I mentioned uh, that if I asked him to kick the ball 10,000 times, he would probably go to it. And he's been, he's been relentless in his preparation for three years. And he performed on the field. Killing Mulker. <laughs> the coach is a guy that does a little, oh man, I think it's Rob Pratt. Rob Pratt, any of you listen to KDA, he wants me to come out to Coons Market on New Year's, on Christmas Eve, celebrate the seven fishes with him and KDA. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, getting back to the coach. I might as well tell you up front who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Coach Danny Stolut. <laughs> Danny is special because he helps kids and he helps coaches. He's there every day early and sets up the field for us. He, he does it so many things it would take me until uh, after the kickoff of the uh, game tonight to list all the things. He drives the truck, he packs the bags. I can't take it right now. And, uh, you know, he's tried to retire a couple of times and uh, the rest of us won't let him. And he, by the way, was Jones personal coach. There's only one person that could stretch Kellum. There's only one person who could do a lot of things because that's the way Danny wants it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. And for that, I think the coaching staff uh, should award him for his special work. Danny? It's been fun to be here tonight. Oh, wait a minute, I got another award. I haven't checked. Following the uh, program, the Heart of a Champion Award. The Harshman family gives a scholarship, not to the school, but to the, a player on the football team that has a heart of a champion like their son, Jeff, who was a manager and an aid to all of us, and he did have a big heart, still has a big heart. And uh, his family, very uh, appreciative and graciously, gives an award to somebody that we think has Jeff's heart of a champion attributes. And this is an amount of $2,500 that will go towards whatever he needs it for when he uh, goes to college. And uh, I alluded to, to this a little while ago, and I'm just going to say one more time, I'm doggone glad you're not a jockey. Alex Garber. <laughs> I had 
some other things I wanted to talk about in terms of <clears throat> what my life has been like a little bit since uh, I'm still. Uh, I haven't I haven't gone out too much, uh, quite frankly, because uh, I didn't want to talk about things. And uh, uh, I, I got some funny stories. I'll tell you. I'll tell you one. I was in John Eagle. I finally ventured out last Sunday afternoon, volunteered to go to John Eagle. And I, I wasn't five feet in the door, and I see a lawyer friend of mine who's kind of loud, you know, and he, he quite respectfully calls me the legend, and, and of course, he, hey, legend, you know, I'm, I'm, I got my hat on, the glasses on, I'm trying to be incognito, and, Four people turn around expecting to see Danny Marino. And then... <laughs> but anyhow, I ran into various people. I ran into Mr. Bozak, and I ran into uh, uh, Mary Repacek. And uh, Mary, she can talk. I mean, <laughs> I kept passing this guy, I kept passing this guy who who seemed like he wanted to say something but didn't. And finally I came, you know how this, you know how this is John Henry, you leave him or, I passed this man and, and, and the best description I can give is he, he was a meek, he was kind of a meek man. And he finally came up and he said, coach, he said, yes sir. He said, I'm a I'm a former band parent. And, but I was at the game the other night, and I said, yes, sir, and he said, you know, I just want to tell you, nobody booed any louder than I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have more stories, but I'm not going to go through them all. You know, uh, people have been very kind. And, uh, uh, some, you know, I, I went, I went into the store yes, yesterday, as a matter of fact. Don't ask me where, Pam, because I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I was in this store, and so it was mostly women. And uh, I got the hat and the glasses on, and no, none of these women, I guarantee you, wanted to talk football, which was fine with me. But finally the clerk, who knew me a little bit, said, Oh, hi coach! <laughs> and she said, How'd we do this year? <laughs> so, I guess it's, it's been nice to be here tonight. For, Friendly people who all we all have the same uh, concerns, and uh, if, if some night you're, you're awake at three or four o'clock in the morning and you're thinking about uh, you're thinking about a referee, or, <laughs> just feel free to call because I'm, I'm probably awake thinking about the same thing. <laughs> I will say this about that game at Hinesfield, and I was very proud of Upper St. Clair. I don't know that we've ever had that big a crowd be that emotional. You know, sometimes I kid the players on Friday nights and we'll score a touchdown and there'll be a... <laughs> and I think, where are, are we at the opera? Where are we? But, uh, Upper St. Clair woke up down in Hinesfield, and it was great. And I thank all of you for those of you that played. I thank you for your great efforts, and those of you that supported. I thank you for your great efforts. And uh, uh, we'll end knowing that <clears throat> there's a lot of positive things that went on with this football team and in this room tonight. And at this time, Mary, you want to come back up? All right, thank you very much. Boosters, we would like to thank all of the coaches for all of their efforts this year. We have a little bit of appreciation.
So I'm really pleased that Dakota's made his decision there. We'll have two Panthers that are going to continue as Panthers.
There's a there was 33 bars on this U, I guess. Seneca Valley when they played afternoon games. But to this day, I never wear anything that really shows who I am uh, when I'm out of the football game. And uh, you're right, this, this wouldn't be me and Giant Eagle. Right? <laughs> but it's a memento, and I'll guarantee you I'll make good use of it. Thank you very much. You know, I, I gotta, I'm going to be very quick. These trophies that are sitting up there, um, uh, that was one of our goals this year. One of our goals was to add to that trophy case, add to the <coughs> tradition. And the, uh, the gold ball represents the conference championship that the conference gives us. And the, uh, the plaque in the back comes from the WPIL from winning the conference championship. And of course, the, the um, one in the middle there is from the runner-up trophy for you. So we certainly, uh, I'm sorry I didn't point this stuff out earlier. I wanted the players to see it, because I know I've been talking about that gold football, and it just arrived the other day. But uh, we definitely added to the trophy case, and we'll put it in a prominent spot so that I can always member of the team of 2011. Thank you very much.